Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're going to do a nursery tour and man, we have got some really fun things to share with you. We have got gorgeous flowering shrubs. We have got gorgeous flowering annuals. We have a brand new massive selection of chick charms and succulents that have come in. Cannot wait to share that with you and unique stone has arrived and we have gotten half of it unboxed. So there is a lot to show you. So let's just dive right on in. We are Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 7B, just west of Charlotte. We are open Wednesdays through Saturdays, 9 to 3. Come see us. We would love to help you. Um, I had to start here with the popcorn viburnum because I see some flowers on this sweet plant. So a lot of people here in the south will call them snowball bushes. A viburnum is not a hydrangea. Yes, the blooms look very, very similar, but they are completely different plants. This is the popcorn viburnum, um, and it does bloom this time of year. Mine are starting to bloom as well. Hydrangeas are going to be later than this. Beautiful, nice kind of a, a fuzzy texture almost to the leaf on it. This is going to be, let me get all my specs here for you, partial shade. Mine get about probably five to six hours of sun in the morning and then they are in the shade. They're going to have gorgeous fall color, stunning fall color. Um, it's going to be five to eight feet tall, four to seven feet wide and hardy in zones uh, three is that a five? That's a three. That's a five. I don't know. I don't have, <laughs> this is what happens when you get old people. Uh, zone five. Yes. And it's cold hardy to negative 10, negative 20. So there you go. Um, it does really well for me. Just beautiful white flowers on it. If you're looking to have like a screen, then this is a great one because they are relatively fast growers um, because you cannot beat the gorgeous white blooms this time of year. Then you've got green during the summer and then the fall amazing beautiful fall color now these sweet things are just showing off this is the wide jillia this is wine and spirits gorgeous plant look at that really nice dark foliage to it, it has green and with some little black tints to it beautiful creamy white flowers um, wygelia actually do really well here if you put them in the right conditions they are going to be um, sun to part shade for us because they are hardy in zones four to eight definitely still want to get them that you know five to six hours of good sun but if you can give them a break in the afternoon it does help them um, if it's on irrigation then they can handle the more sun this is going to be three to five three to five feet tall and wide. So can you imagine when this is like three or five feet tall and wide and it's covered in these flowers? Beautiful plant. I mean, stunning. Love this. So this is a great option for you for Wygelia. This is the perfect time to get it in the ground. While we still have cool temperatures, we're getting consistent rain. Wonderful. Now, if you want to go with more of a pure dark foliage, then we have Midnight Wine Shine. Um, you can just see how nice and dark this foliage is. Very kind of comparable as far as color wise to a Laura Pedalum. This is again that same that sun hardiness in zones five to eight, but much shorter, only like one to one and a half feet tall and wide. So this would be wonderful at the front of your border front of your bed and let's see tidy habit dramatic dark purple foliage make this deer resistant shrub hello that's that very popular word that you all love to hear deer resistant not deer proof um yeah shrub so beautiful beautiful wygelias are deciduous so just keep that in mind when you're um, shopping and you're thinking about wygelia and then one of my favorites this is vino verde and Vino Verde is also known for its gorgeous foliage. You have got dark, almost black margins on the outside, and then inside is green. Uh, why? Let's see, here we go. Vino Verde is going to be three to five tall and wide, and it is going to give you, it will give some red flowers, um, it is mostly for the foliage. So I'm gonna let you see that picture right there. Kind of a nice cranberry red color on the blooms 
So if you are looking for either lots of like foliage interest, flowers, wygelias are a great option for you. And these three are just going to be really pretty. We had the Vino Verde growing in the trial garden last year. It did great. I've got it now growing in the berm, handled the cold temperatures really well. Um, it's just a great, wonderful option for you. Um, whether you need something kind of big, that three to five, or you want it nice and small and petite, then that midnight wine shine would be a great option. We brought down new shrubs up from production today. So I wanna share those with you. We were busy bees today, let me tell you. We had folks, the nursery was covered up. Then we had a whole crew bringing down plants. We had another crew that we were over there putting um, the unique stone out. So we were busy, busy, busy. We have barberries and this is Sunjoy Neo. Love this plant because of its beautiful, really kind of that reddish maroon color. Gorgeous. Now, barberries, do they have thorns? Yes, they do. Um, and that's okay. They're not, you know, it's not a shrub that you're going to go and like run your hands through. I don't go to my rows and run my hands through my rows, but I love the color of it. And it's going to keep this really nice, bright neon orange red foliage all season long. Barberries are deciduous. And so just keep that in mind. You need to have them though in that full sun. They have to have the sun in order to get this great color on them. They're going to be hardy in zones six to eight two and a half feet tall and wide. My folks who have um, deer pressure, this would be a great option for you. This has high deer resistance. Keep in mind, deer resistance does not mean deer proof. If a deer is hungry, it will eat anything, even something with thorns on it. But you've got gorgeous um, color for three seasons out of the year. Really, really nice and um, just a beautiful option. Very popular plant, rightly so. Another popular plant that we're talking about, roses. These have been flying out of here like crazy. So we have a nice selection of the new roses from Proven Winners. This is, look at this y'all. Look at that beautiful flower. This is the Ringo Double Pink. I believe this is Double Pink. I don't wanna move and, and pull the tag because um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up, mess up the shot. Um, here we go. So the Ringo Double Pink. There we go. It is hardy in zones four to eight, and it is going to be two to three feet tall and wide. So this is going to be a nice option for those of you who need a nice short petite rose, maybe in the front of your landscape. Uh, but it Double Pink brings you multiple colors on one plant. So they transform from pink with a red center to a soft pink with a magenta center as they age. But that is just a very beautiful spring-like color and there are buds all over this plant. So we have a couple of the Ringos here. We also have the Reminiscence series. We have Crema, which is a beautiful buttermilk color. We have some Rise Ups, which are like the mini climbers. They're not going to be an aggressive climber like my um, the ones at the house. These are only going to be about five, five feet tall if you want to do them as a climber, or you can just have them as a shrub rose. But beautiful colors. Oh, I see another bloom. Who is this? This might be Amberness. Yes, look at this. This is Rise Up Amberness. So you can see that you, it's, a, it's a, gonna be a climber, but look at that. And this is an older bloom. Amberness last year probably was about my favorite flower um, just because it was very prolific. And then that nice kind of that soft peachy amber color, just gorgeous. But the whole line of roses from Proven Winners is gonna be more um, disease resistant, more tolerant to any of those kinds of diseases, black spot, those kinds of things. And then here we have another reminiscent. No, who is this? Hang on, rise up, rise up lilac. I was like, this is not a reminiscent. It is definitely a rise up, but this is rise up lilac days. And you can see it's a nice soft um, pink lavender color. Again, these plants are covered 
in buds. So it is about to be rose season here in North Carolina. Very exciting time. These have been flying out of here. Um, so we have the roses. If you were looking to add some roses, then these would be great options for you. Uh, is that anything else down here on the shrub light I missed? Don't think so, other than it's about to be azalea season. So the azaleas are starting to bloom. Um, even with all the kind of the crazy frost that we've had, they are getting ready to bloom. We've got behind Jerry, we've got some of the Perfecto Mundos from Proven Winners. These are encores, um, but these rude blooming azaleas, it is a great time to get them in the ground. So you can enjoy some of these colors for this spring season. And we've got four of those left. That is what, the double purple? The double purple. And the Perfecto Mundos, they were developed at NC State, so they are great for North Carolina. Um, but both the Perfecto Mundos and the Encores are re-blooming azaleas. So it's not just the old-timey azaleas where they bloom once in the spring. These will re-bloom multiple times in the season and they are full sun. So you definitely need to have sun conditions for these. Uh, the girls just pulled up with another truckload of gorgeous annuals. I have, what I say is, um, I am cautiously confident in beginning to put out some annuals in the landscape, both in the landscape and in containers. And we have seen that other folks are feeling the same way. Very excited about that. Uh, the hanging baskets have really started to kind of fill in. So we have brought some down. Now this is not, like we grow big hanging baskets. It is the very beginning of April after all. So this is living on the edge. We talked about these when we made these baskets and you saw them and they are gorgeous. So we have these recipe baskets. The girls and Josh have recipe baskets too that are in the cocoa line baskets. We'll show you those. We have what we call mono baskets. Mono just simply means the same, right? So this is a monoculture, meaning we have multiples of the same plant in the hanging basket. It makes a big impact from a distance. And then this is a fun one that we tried out this year. This is the, one of the recipes from Proven Winners. And it has the, um, let me see, my tag's over here that tells me what it is. Yeah, so we have the Goldilocks Rocks, which is the Bidens, that bright yellow. Then we have Raspberry Rush Supertunia, and then we also have the Verbena Whiteout. The Verbena is not blooming right now. This Whiteout tends to be a little bit later, but imagine big, huge white balls right here. Gorgeous plants. So hanging baskets, you're good to go. And these all that we have are going to be sun hanging baskets for sure. Fig trees, if you're interested in figs, we have got beautiful fig trees. This is the, I want to say, yeah, the brown turkey. And so it'll get nice size and they already have figs on them, y'all. Like these are things to eat. So plant it in the ground and you're gonna have beautiful, uh, delicious figs to eat. Annuals going crazy. We have got color galore. Whether you're looking for petunias or whatever it is that you're looking for, we have got it. I'm excited to share with you um, all of the succulents that have just come in uh, two days ago. We unpacked these yesterday. So those of you that are going to be coming to the nursery and shopping, there's just two different kind of categories that I want you to be aware of. Um, we have, these all are from Garden Solutions, which is a great nursery up in Michigan. And they are the home of the chick charms that we're going to get to in just a minute, the Sempervivums. These are what they call their living canvas. And the living canvas is gonna be a combination of both hardy and tender succulents. They are really just gorgeous. Those bowls that you see are meant, if you want just to take it and plop it on the center of your patio table, then great. It needs full sun, a little bit of water, and you're good to go. So we have them in the eight inch rounds. We also have them in the 11 inch ovals. And these are impressive plants. Like these are really nice planters. So you like, you have string of pearls. Don't even ask me um, all the different ones that are in here, but you've got a beautiful assortment of plants in here. These make fantastic gifts. So if you need to say, have a thank you gift for 
a secretary or a teacher or a friend or um, I don't know, like you're going to have a, a get together, you're going to have a barbecue and you want to put something out. This would be great. They are tender, meaning like you can't leave them out all winter. They will not survive the winter. I did try some and they didn't make it, but um, they will give you gorgeous color and fun interest throughout from now all the way up to a freeze. Can you bring them in in the winter? Absolutely. You can totally bring these inside. They just can't survive our winter. So just keep that in mind. So we have them in the ovals and we also have them like in the cute little round containers. So this is, they have different uh, recipes. This is Lakeside Lemonade and they are all a little bit different. Lots of different interest to them. Really nice. If you wanted to take this and put it in a little planter, you absolutely could. Um, and you could buy a couple of different ones and kind of deconstruct them and then make your own. You could do that as well. That is what I did last year. Now over here to the chick charms. Chick charms are going to be cold tolerant. They are actually hardy in zones three to eight. So everything here that you see that has a chick charm um, tag on it, that will be winter hardy. You can leave it out in the winter zones at three to eight and it will survive and do really well. These are sempervivums, um, sempervivums, however you want to say it, hen and chicks. They're also known as that. Chick Charms is known for their vibrant color, right? I mean, you see, you have got major color here. They are so much fun. I never um, considered myself really a succulent person until we got some of these last year and I created my strawberry planter, my succulent planter with these. It was probably my favorite container of the whole season. It is great. And when I say that um, these plants are healthy, it is insane. Look at this. So they're called hen and chicks because the main mother plant is the hen and then all the little babies that come around on the side, those are the chicks. You can absolutely come in here and clip these off, let them dry for a couple of days in the shade and then reroute them into other containers. That is what is so the beautiful thing about the sempervivums that are great. So we've got massive amounts of color you have the trios where there are three different ones in a container together. Or like if you're like me, who maybe you already have some chick charms and you are looking just to add a couple, then we have them as individual ones. Massive color. I think the gold nugget is gonna be one of the most popular ones because of that bright red. Um, but also look at this green. This is, I think this is apple teeny. Yes, this is apple teeny. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Really nice bright green and then those black tips. Oh, it is gorgeous. So those are fun. And then last but not least, these are brand new on the market this year. I believe this is the first year on the market. These are the Chick Charms Giants and these things will get absolutely massive. They can fill in a one gallon container. I'll just pull this one out. They can fill out a one gallon container in nothing flat. Um, these, I went with the smaller ones just because I didn't know if people would want a gallon right away. But you can see the root systems on this. So I picked out one of them and I'm just gonna put it in a container by itself. So that way it can really fill in and do great. So I'm telling you y'all, if you are not, have not got on the Chick Charm wagon yet, you need to because they are fantastic and amazing. Look at the Rockapucos have started to bloom. So much fun. These are the double impatience for the shade. I know sometimes it feels like our shade gardens get a little bit of a little neglect. We don't address them and talk about them as much. The Rockapucos are wonderful for your shade gardens, whether it's a container or the landscape. Just a really nice plant. Wisteria, in my opinion, is showing off probably the best right now. She's in the most blooms, but we have got flower power coming up all around the place. Um, we've got loads of coleus. You can put out coleus right now. Just be aware that if you put coleus out and we have a cold spell and something happens, we get a little cool, then you're gonna wanna cover this. But this is lime time. Look how nice and branched and how thick that is. Just a beautiful plant. But coleus does not like cold temperatures. It'll get really limp. 
if it gets too cold, like, you know, a frost or a freeze, it will kill the plant. So that's why I say just be careful and be ready to cover it if need be. Same thing kind of with your pentas. Pentas are like a classic, wonderful. They love the heat and humidity and look at all these buds. They are getting ready to absolutely explode. These Sunstar Pentas are wonderful for attracting pollinators, butterflies galore. They will just do magnificently well um, and they have huge blooms on them. So this bloom is not open yet, but look at that flower, nice and big. And this is what we call this plant will bury the dead, meaning that when this bloom is done, then you have your other shoots come up and hide your dead spent flowers. So you don't have to worry about pinching them. So as the plant grows, it hides and covers up the old spent foliage and the old spent blooms. Beautiful plant, coffee cups. People are asking, do we have coffee cups? We sure do, coffee cups. This is a calicasia, will be wonderful, give you nice big height. I personally have found that it does best in the landscape as opposed to containers. We tried it in containers one time, they just did not do as well. We were visiting four star greenhouses in Michigan that same summer. I was talking to their head display gardener and he said, yeah, they do best in the landscape, not really in containers. So just take that information. Hummingbirds are getting ready to come back to North Carolina. Um, we are about to enter our hummingbird season. And if you want hummingbirds, then you need vermilion air. Vermilion air is my number one plant to attract not only um, your hummingbirds, but they are a great pollinator support. They have the bloom, this is it. Nice, really tubular fluorescent orange. So because hummingbirds can see in like ultraviolet colors, they will see this plant, they will see these flowers and they will come to it. And that little tubular design of the flower is perfect for their little beaks to get in there and suck up all of that delicious nectar. All right, um, basil, amazel basil. Again, cautiously, you could start to use this, um, put it out. It, basil does like it warm, so just, you know, keep an eye on that. Um, let's see. You want to go ahead and move on outside? Sure. Let's move on outside. There's so much to talk about. This time of year, we could, I think, do a four-hour nursery tour. Emily's all excited about it. She is very much so. Salvias. Perennial salvias are a wonderful um, addition to the garden. This is crystal blue, color spires, crystal blue. These have been out all winter, yes? yes? These have been out all winter. And so they overwinter really well for us. They are hardy in zones three to eight. So <laughs> our zone seven B winters are nothing for these plants, but beautiful, nice early spring flowers that the pollinators are really going to appreciate because there's not a whole lot blooming, um, but what is blooming, they are really attracted to. So we have multiple colors of the color spires. We have azure blue, we have crystal blue, we have no, azure snow, excuse me, azure snow, we have, Indiglo Girl, um, lots of different kind of shades of blues on those as well. If you're looking for flower power, here you go. Whether it is the brand new, look at this. Is this not gorgeous? I'll calling all my NC State, Georgia. I don't know who else is red. Uh, Louisville, yeah, they're red. Um, all my, all my red, all my red fans. Um, this is the brand new Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet. So pretty. And I don't know, maybe I'm just having amnesia. I don't remember it being this pretty last year. I just do not remember it being this gorgeous. I am loving this red color, um, but this is an annual. We sell them in gallons and in the grande size containers, because if you're putting this in the landscape, sometimes people like a bigger oomph right away, um, but you could absolutely put this in a container, again, if you want a big impact right away. So we have, we offer our petunias, not all the petunias, but we offer them in both gallons and grandes, depending on, on what you need. But beautiful color through here. Um, I wanna back up because this is what, poor Jerry, he has to keep up with me. Um, the hanging baskets. So we have them both, of course, in the 10 inch, which is the green, right? So we have them in the 10 inch containers, and then we have them also in the 16 inch cocoa line baskets. So this is the exact same recipe that I just showed you. 
In the 16 inch, it really can stay in this container all season long. If it's in a 10 inch, you're probably gonna to wanna to move it up, but, or this is where it's great if you have, like I had a customer yesterday and she said, I just want to buy a hanging basket, a mixed arrangement and take it out of the pot the hanging basket and put it into one of my containers and I was like that is a great thing to do it is a great gardening hack so these 10 inch baskets you can take them out and replant them in one of your really nice pretty decorative containers and they do really nicely um, let's see creeping phlox this is the time of year that creeping phlox is blooming so we do have that this is the spring bling pink sparkles they only get four to eight inches tall so that's really about as tall as they're going to get and then your spacing they're going to grow to be about two feet wide so they're going to spread out be beautiful early spring color hardy in zones about three-ish but definitely four to eight and great ground cover with gorgeous flowers on it as well we have other phloxes like paniculata phloxes that'll get nice and tall um, this is going to be the next one to bloom this is the opening act romance now this may not look like a phlox to you but it is a great one we have it in the berm behind me uh, what i call laura's bed because we planted it um, for laura on garden answer this is that perennial phlox It'd be 20 to 22 inches tall hardy in zones of four to eight and so this will be your next bloomer as far as your flocks so you have your creeping flocks then you have this then you have the um, the paniculata flocks that's a nice big cones love this plant um, it is doing very well over in the garden dianthus dianthus is a wonderful early spring bloomer as well these overwintered all winter outside this is part of the fruit punch series this is the coral classic coral they remind me very much of carnations so you got carnation blooms on it and look how many buds are on that plant just absolutely loaded going to be beautiful nice big presence and they don't get really tall right so they're only eight to ten inches tall hardy in zones four to nine so very adaptable and they're going to go in full to part sun so another really nice kind of evergreen ground cover if you will um, your mound's going to get bigger it's not going to spread like crazy but it is a wonderful option for sure um, let's see all right, so we're going to make our way through the pines and I want to share with you some of the hostas so that we have. Look at the stand of Solomon Seal coming up. I did notice that uh, today when I was walking through, it's like popped up just like boom, like that. So we've got gorgeous Solomon Seal that we have growing here. We have it available for sale. So if you can see the pots right here, it is a wonderful early spring bloomer great perennial that will naturalize really nicely not invasive at all but it will spread um, the hostas are coming up just beautiful look at this this is island breeze so nice and vibrant here in the south like where we are in the piedmont at least now if you have cooler regions like the mountains um, then they just have beautiful hostas here you know all season long for us in the heat of the summer they start to just look because it's so hot and they don't get a break but the spring hostas are gorgeous really intense beautiful color and we have got lots of options i think this is golden tiara right here um, basically there is a hosta just about every color you can imagine every shade of green blue um, yellowish like chartreuse lime and then every size so you can get nice and short ones that are really kind of thin and stringy or you can get ones that are just huge and massive so depending on what your garden needs um, will depend on the hosta that you want we showed you these peonies the other day look this is the one i think that it was like the creekside mystery Look how much it has grown since just we were here last time. Covered in buds. Um, people were talking about ants. How do you keep ants off of peonies? That is a completely natural thing. The ants are attracted to the sap, the sweet nectar that the peonies give off. They are not gonna hurt the plant. So you do not need to go out and try to kill the ants. What I do is because people don't like it sometimes when you cut the flowers and bring them inside because there could be ants that are tucked up in there is 
obviously we have it in a vase and then I'll put it a little bowl, a shallow bowl with some water in it. So it's like a little moat around the base of it. Works like a charm. So that way you don't have little ants running all over your yard. All right, unique stone. We got the unique stone in the end of last week and we have 15 pallets of it on this order. If you had a special order for this April delivery, it is here. This is going to be your section. So if you see the green kind of survey tape, that means that this is sold. It has sold on it and it has your name written on it. Today we were able to get through half of the pallets. So we got, well, I think we got through a little bit more than half and we're going to finish it up early next week. So by next Wednesday, when we open on next Wednesday, if you had a special order, you can come pick yours up. It will be ready for you to pick up. You are in a special section over here. Anybody that would like to place a special order from Unique Stone, I have another delivery coming in August. To make the deadline for that August delivery, I need to get your information and get paid by May 6th. So May 6th is the cutoff for that August delivery. We will then have another order coming in like late October. Um, and so I'll give you the deadline for that you know, later on. Just know that we try to have at least three to four deliveries of Unique Stone per year. And so we have those available, all right? Now, everything else that I'm gonna show you is gonna be available for retail. Um, some of them are going to be partly put together and some of them are not. So for example, like what am I talking about? Well, right here we have the Savannah Urn. The Savannah Urn is a really popular, nice, big urn. It is obviously going to be two pieces. So this one, we have the top and the base. When you open the pallets of Unique Stone, you don't know what's going to be in that pallet, right? And because when they're packing it, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. So here are the rest of the bases of the Savannah urns. That means their tops are somewhere in the rest of the pallets that are not opened yet. But you can do this in sun or shade, does not matter. Lots of beautiful options for this. Again, for example, here we have the tops of the Galloway urns. They're all right here. That means their bases are somewhere over there. So we're going to have um, lots of Galloway urns. It is a beautiful, nice, tall um, urn. It sits on this beautiful pedestal. A lot of people know it because Laura with Gardenancer has one in her garden that she uses a lot. So we, we had one put together and it's after literally had been sitting there for maybe 15 minutes and it was gone. So, so those of you, if you're coming to the nursery, um, as soon as you get to the nursery, uh, if you're interested in the Unique Stone, come check it out because um, yeah, we were not even advertising that Unique Stone was here, but the couple saw it and they were like, she said, that is the exact one that I want. And so loaded it up and took it home. Um, these are the troughs that we, we have had the troughs. We are adding in, we had added in some new of the rectangular um, hummingbird planters. This is one of my personal favorites. Come, and we did a lot of different colors. So like this is the aged stone, then we have the green, then we have like a light walnut. So we have lots of options that Brenna wants to get in the shot and show off. Um, but I do love this container. It is a great one. And we do have the squares coming as well. They're again, somewhere in, in those containers and um, we'll have those pulled out for you. We've got some Herm the Worms. Herm the Worm is a really fun, I think your garden should be fun. I think, uh, you know, if you don't have fun in your garden, then you're just boring. And so here's Herm the Worm and it's actually three pieces and you put it together however you want. And I'll, it's just sitting there. There's no, there's no spike. It's just that the weight of it. So it looks like this little worm, you know, crawling through your garden lovely then we have um lots more of we're gonna have the foxes so the derby fox we have the forest gnomes which i think are so stinking cute got those we're gonna have a good number of the sassy frogs this is a nice lightweight <laughs> the the derby foxes and the forest gnomes they're they're pretty hefty they're pretty heavy but the little sassy frogs are nice and um, light and so are the cute little owls so this is hairy the hairy owl really sweet you can just kind of tuck it in just in a, in a little nook um, but everything will have the price on it 
So when you come, you can see exactly how much it cost. Um, so we have hairy owl, hootie. So here's hootie, hootie's a little taller on a stand. And then of course the mushrooms, lots of good mushrooms will be available. The geckos, the garden geckos are always so popular. Again, because these are nice and lightweight. So even my folks who are traveling to come see us and to come visit us, even if you're on a plane, like you can still take a garden gecko home because it is, I mean, it, it may weigh five pounds. I don't know, very light. Um, TSA will not flag you, I don't think, for having your, your garden gecko in there. Um, somebody i think this was probably i don't know if it was the last order or two orders ago but they did a special order of the resting fawn and i probably would not have ordered this on my own but when it came it was the cutest little thing and even my dad who is not a big what i would call like a yard art guy he loved it and as I told my mom and daddy, because they were helping us today unload, I was like, this is the only deer that I want in my garden. Just a nice, sweet little fawn, all tucked up, curled up, and to have, um, this would be a great, just tuck her in somewhere, right? If, it's, if you've got a shade garden, hostas, just have it tucked in there, would be beautiful. So this is a fun piece, and then I did, just because this is my personality, I had to get them in the light walnut, dark walnut, kind of reminiscent of their colors right um, i've never seen a green fawn so i didn't order the green or the aged stone which is that really gray that kind of that cement gray so i have them in those colors available and then one of the last things that we have to show today is the bistro table again this was a special order from a customer last time and i fell in love with it it is a beautiful table very simple kind of that tapered pedestal it is two pieces the top will just lay on top of it just rest on it but in here you have a beautiful design of hummingbirds all different kinds of birds in here very kind of simple um, but this would be a wonderful addition to have in your garden or on your patio put two chairs with it and then you can sit and enjoy it um, we have it in just about all the colors i think um, you see that we've got two set up right here, and then these are the tops. The pedestals are somewhere over there. Um, but again, lots of good options for the unique stuff. Oh, the toadstools. Come here, hang on. Sorry, I got excited. I forgot about these. So we have the Florentine bird baths, first of all. So I'm gonna have colors in these. I've tried to do multiple colors for you. So this is just the one um, that we've found so far. I think this is light walnut here, dark walnut, one of the walnuts. And then we have the little toadstools. These are meant to be sat upon. They are the sweetest little stools. They feel really good on your tushy too. Like it's a very comfortable seat, but it has all sorts of great little decorative additions to it obviously it looks like a mushroom right and then you have leaves that leaf designs within the toadstool at the top here very subtle and then underneath you've got some other little mushrooms you've got flowers i mean there's all sorts of like there's a frog i see a little lizard down there a snail again just some fun characteristics to add to your garden so maybe you want to have a spot in your garden where you want to have a seat but you don't have the room for a nice big bench the toadstool is fantastic for that and i'm telling you it is a quite comfortable little seat for sure um so like i said we've got what was it seven seven more pallets to unbox we still have a good number of things to pull out we will have them all ready for those of you that are traveling um, for easter because i know a lot of people were asking if we're going to be open um, on good friday and we are doesn't matter doesn't matter what the holiday is basically wednesday through saturday we are going to be open from nine to three so you can come see us we would love to see you um, but yeah a lot, of, a lot of stuff is happening. There's a lot of great plants, great options. Great garden is happening right now. We would love to help you. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.